Hi, this is Joe Maciars from A Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to continue with quadratic equations one more time, and I want to talk about changing the standard form of y equals negative 0.5x squared plus 3x plus 0.5 into vertex form by completing the square. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to the graphing calculator. Uh, I've already pre-put in the equation. Again, we're not interested in getting the graphing calculator to graph this. We want to be able to graph this by hand, and that's why we're going to complete the square. Now, the first thing I would do in an equation like this is, if possible, I like to work with fractions. Uh, a lot of people are a little bit more afraid of fractions than decimals, but it turns out that fractions are usually a little bit more friendly to you when you're doing things like this than decimals are. So I prefer fractions. So let's rewrite this in terms of some fractions. So of course the 0.5s are both going to be 1 half. Okay. And again, we're not interested in uh, the, the actual graph part of this yet. Okay, so just as we did before, we're going to highlight uh, these two terms here and we want to get this to be a 1 in front of the x squared. We want to get this negative 1 half away. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull that negative 1 half out. So there's our negative 1 half. And then we're going to have basically a 1 in front of that x squared. Remember that that's implicit. There's actually you know nothing visible there, but there's always uh, a 1 that you can imagine multiplying in. It gives you the same thing. 1x squared is the same thing as x squared. Okay, now for the next term, we want to know what times negative one-half will get us this three. Now, of course, we're going to need a negative, so let me go back and replace that plus sign with a minus sign, because a minus times a minus is what's going to get us this plus sign here. Now, the other way we can do this is we can take the three and divide it by the one-half. Now, when we do that, we'll, we would be doing a uh, flip and multiply operation, and so we would get 6. Another way that to do it is just ask what times 1 half will get us that 3, and the, that answer again is 6. So we're going to have a 6x here, and you can always test it. Just multiply this negative 1 half times this negative 6x, and negative times a negative is positive, right there, and then 1 half times 6, of course, will be 3, so we'll have our 3x. And uh, again, we're going to want to put in a plus 0. The plus 1 half that we're, we have on the outside, we're just going to let tag along. And again, we're going to do something special with the 0. We're not really going to leave that 0. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 6 and divide it by 2, which is going to give us a 3, and then we're going to square it. So 3 squared is 9. But we want to keep it 0, so when I add 9, I'm going to have to also subtract 9, and that keeps the zero there that we wanted. We don't want to change the original equation. Okay, the next thing is we want to take these three terms and separate them from whoops, this term right here. Okay, so that's our next line. Again, not interested in the graph. Okay, so y equals our negative one-half and we're going to separate the first three terms out, so we're going to have x squared minus 6x plus 9 and the next thing we're going to have is a negative times a negative so it's going to be positive and then we have 1 half times 9 which will get us 9 halves so we're going to have plus 9 whoops, 9 halves and then plus 1 half All right, and again not interested in the graph okay so now we're going to finish completing the square and you might recall that what I said last time is we look at this term right here this x squared we take a square root that's going to give us our x this sign is what we next put in so it's a minus sign this time so we got a minus and then the square root of the third term which is going to be a three and we have to finish completing the square by putting that little square up above then we're going to add these two terms together, and 9 halves plus 1 half is 10 halves, and 10 halves is the same thing as 5. And so this is our completed uh, vertex form quadratic equation. 
Again, the general form would be y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. So from this, and again, it doesn't like that because I didn't define a, h, and k, but from this, we can see that a is negative 1 half. The negative sign tells us it'll open downward. The 1 half is going to tell us something. Uh, we're going to keep that a surprise. Uh, I mentioned that we, we weren't going to say, but uh, for some of you, you already know. It's clear that the h must be a 3, a positive 3, and the k must be a positive 5. So let's go ahead and put in the uh, vertex point. We do that again from that uh, template equation, parametric Cartesian curve, that we are going to get rid of the parametric part of. of. And let's go back and put some spaces in there. And we said that our vertex uh, was going to be at 3, 5, 3, 5. So 3, 5. And there's our point 3, 5. All right. Now, as before, I've prearranged some points so that I don't have to spend all that time copying them in. Uh, I guess before we do that, let me emphasize that uh, previously we said that a was equal to 1, uh, when a was equal to 1 that we've got a pattern of up one, sorry, over one, up one, over one, up two, uh, three, over one, up five, over one, up seven, and so on down the line. Now, and it doesn't like that equation again. So now, in our case, we have at least the absolute value of a is equal to one half. I'm not going to worry about the negative sign right at this moment. I just want to get the numbers. Okay. And uh, so what we do, as you remember last time, is we take that 1 half and we multiply it into each of these numbers. So 1 times 1 half is going to be 1 half. And then 3 times 1 half is going to be 3 halves. And then 5 times 1 half will be 5 halves. And finally, 7 times 1 half will be 7 halves. And we can keep going 9 halves, 11 halves, so on down the line. Again, it's not going to enjoy that equation, so we'll just ignore that. All right, so let me now bring these points down here. And uh, what would we do? Well, if we're graphing this by hand, we'd have to remember that the A itself is actually a negative, which means instead of going over 1 and up 1, we're going to go over 1 and down. Uh, and not 1, but 1 half in this case. So if we go over 1 from 3, 5, we're going to be going over to 4 and down 1 half, which will pull, put us at 4.5. And as luck would have it, I've put in 4 and 4.5 right there, and so that's what that point would look like. Uh, again, going back the other way, over 1 this way and down 1 half would give us 2, 4.5. And there's that point. Now we're going to be going down 3 halves. So again, over 1 to 5 and down 3 halves will put us at 3. So there that point will be 5, 3. And then again, over 1 this way and down 3 halves will put us at 1, 3 right there. Okay, let me scroll this up. I did a few more points because what you're starting to see is that this graph is going to be a little wider than normal. Uh, the next point we get by going over 1 from 5, 3, so going over 1, and this time we're going down 5 halves, which will put us at 1 half. So 6 point and 0 0.5, which is right there, and then from 1 we'll go over to 0 and down to the same y value of 0 0.5. Okay. The next one is 7 halves, so over 1 to 7, and down 7 halves will put us at 7, negative 3. And then from this point, we'll go over 1 and down to negative 3 as well. And just for a little more color to it, we'll put in the 9 halves, so we would go over 1 from here and down 9 halves, and that's going to put us down at negative 7.5. So 8, negative 7.5, and then negative 2, down to 9 halves to negative 7.5. All right, so there's all our points.
points. Let me close this up. And uh, if we go back to our equation and hit the little box right here, hopefully the graph goes right through it, the uh, curve, and it does. For you, of course, you would be just drawing a nice smooth line through those, through those points, and that would give you your graph. And that's how you take the standard form, turn it into the vertex form, graph the points, and then graph the curve. So that's our quadratic, our graph of our quadratic equation. Okay. All right, that's it for quadratic equations. The next one I'm going to do is a, uh, I guess I would call it a vertex form of the absolute value. It's actually the only one I normally see uh, for absolute values. And the uh, interesting thing about it is that it will act very much like the A, H, and Ks that we have here in this vertex form for quadratic equations it's going to act very similar for uh, absolute values and uh, it will indicate to us a pattern that we can apply to many other types of equations so that's going to be it for today I hope you enjoyed the video let's go over to our final ending screens here uh, this has been a tutoring enterprises we've been looking at quadratic equations and looking at changing the standard form into the vertex form by completing the square we specifically looked at y equals negative 0.5x squared plus 3x plus 0 0.5. Uh, again, this is A Tutoring Enterprises. My name is Joe Maciars. Uh, my website is at www.tutent.com. My email is uh, at tutent at nebraska or neb.rr.com. And my phone number is 402-421-3536. If you're interested in some tutoring, uh, please give me a call, and uh, we'll set you up, and I can help you with math or physics or chemistry. And um, I can do uh, any students from Lincoln locally, or we can do all students on Skype and do some online tutoring. Um, the online tutoring really works well, especially when you have your uh, uh, bulletin board type of problems already on your uh, university computer. Uh, if not, generally we just hold up papers to the camera until we can get a screenshot and get things worked out that way. Okay, and if you found this video useful, uh, figure this as shareware for the brain and uh, go ahead and donate a dollar or two to my PayPal account at 210 at nebraska.rr.com and uh, if you didn't find it useful, well, then don't donate. Uh, I appreciate you watching the video and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.